You're about to listen to another Bonversation. Bonversations feature the most interesting and insightful people in the act realm and beyond. Every episode is made possible by people like you who value and support independent media. Now here's your host, JLB. It wasn't a tent, it was this magnificent thing. Yes, Bonversations, this is episode number 44, and today we're talking about, among other things, media fakery, good versus evil, where do we really live? What is this place? And how do we explain these incredible so-called coincidences? For example, when Tom Hanks just a few weeks before 3.11 said, Sometimes it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and sometimes it's 11, uh, 11 in, uh, 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 at night. How do we explain these so-called coincidences? So we've got a lot to talk about with our special guest coming to us from Portugal, Armun Ri. Great to have you on The Bonversations. Great to be here, uh, John. A special greeting to all of the audience, and I hope it's an interesting conversation. I'm absolutely certain that it will be. I was going back through the archives of Fakeologist.com recently, and I found an appearance that you made back in mm -hmm. 2013. So you've been in this corner of the internet for longer than me, Amunri. Yeah, well, uh, back then, I even started listening to a lot of this stuff. I uh, lurked for a long time. And I started listening to Ab the Fakeologist even on TalkShoe. At the time, it was called Waking Up with Ab. I'm not sure if you ever listened to any of those. But it was something that he did on TalkShoe before he even coined the term Fakeologist. So, yeah, I've been around, I've been around since the time that uh, YouTube would actually recommend, let's say, conspiracy videos or something like that in the sidebar. So, yeah, I'm a sort of a... I don't think dinosaurs exist, but if they do, I'm, I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, you're an actor on Dinosaur. You got here before I did, and it's always a treat for me to talk with somebody who's been here for as long as I have or longer because so much has happened in this corner of the internet over the past 10 or 15 years, and we have a lot to look back on. But let's start with your YouTube channel. You do have a YouTube channel, which I'll link to in the show notes. Can you tell the listeners what kind of stuff do you do with your channel? Well, the, the channel is um, basically where I, uh, it, it started as a place to put my contributions, let's say. I've listened, like I said, I've lurked for a long time, listening to, to other people, to other people's ideas, presentations, and so on. And at a certain point, I felt that I, I felt inside of me that I had something to contribute as well, that it was something that probably I couldn't find being addressed elsewhere. And so what I, what I started doing was uh, whenever I had these realizations uh, of some sort, I would write them down in trying, like, like, as if it was explaining to myself if I didn't have the actual realization, and uh, recorded them and uh, things just picked up from there. Although the channel is relatively small, comparatively, I've never really had any effort done to, you know, advertise it, except my appearances um, in places like, uh, like yours. But it is uh, what it is. I don't really, it's something that doesn't really bother me if I have a lot of views or subscribers or anything like that. I prefer quality. And the fact is that I've had some excellent commenters over the years, and I've even became friends with some of them. So it's been a very fruitful experience, but it started off as, as me feeling that I had something to contribute. Well, you might be selling yourself a little bit short there because you do get quite a few views. Typically, your videos get thousands of views, and I want to paint a picture for the listeners. Imagine that you're in a forest. There's many trees around you, and you're looking towards the sun, but it is obscured by the trees, by the canopy, but you do see some sunlight coming through. That is the picture that Armin uses for his video thumbnails. And his videos are actually monologues, they're audios. They're not generally him recording an actual video. It's a monologue that is then put to YouTube. So that's the image that you use as your thumbnail, Amun Ri, is this yeah. image from like a forest. Did you take that image yourself, perchance? No, 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 no. It was actually one of the stock images that was included with the video software that I started using to produce those uh, videos for YouTube. And I just, when I came across that, that image that was included in the software, 
uh, I just knew it was the right one because um, it, it depicted exactly what what I felt I wanted to contribute with. Like uh, there are a lot of trees, there is a forest, we're like immersed in a metaphorical forest. And from behind the, those trees, a, a sort of a ray of light or, or a few rays of light come through. And that sort of depicts what I think realizations are. You know, uh, the mind and the world and reality is like a sort of forest. And from behind the forest, from b beyond the forest, I would say, comes these uh, glimpses, these realizations that give you this sense of knowing about uh, something that you were contemplating on. So that's where it came from. Yeah. Well, let me read out for the listeners some of the titles of your earliest works on your YouTube channel. These are the titles of your videos. And again, these generally have literally thousands of views. The Seeker's Temptations, Dreams, Hopes and Goals, Scripts and Purpose, Addictions, Systems Recruitment, Ego, Evil, Apocalypse, Spells and Rituals, One, Alchemy. It's fair to say, based even just on the titles alone, that you like to reflect on some of the deeper things to do with this thing that we call life. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I think was sort of missing, like you like to coin this corner of the Internet. I think that, that um, things were being analyzed very well, but uh, in a more shallow manner, uh, in the sense of, for example, you would see 9-11 uh, and analyze it in a way that was almost purely materialistic in the sense of this was done probably, this fakery was done probably this way or that way, or, you know, the, uh, the, the victims uh, um, actually didn't die because of this, etc., etc. But I, I think that I felt the need taking a step further, and, and I would even say a step further back instead of forward, so that you could zoom out a little bit and uh, get a, a more... A more of a, an overview of the causes, perhaps, more than the details of the actual uh, fakeries and the, uh, the things that we can actually see and perceive in reality. If I'm understanding what you're saying right, it sounds like you're saying that with this media fakery, for example, 9-11, it's one thing to understand that maybe planes didn't go into buildings. That's one thing. But you seem to be getting at a deeper questioning of why this story was presented to us or what it might mean to us. Something like this. Am I on the right track here? You are. And, and even the 9-11 story, uh, one of the videos, uh, and it was actually one of the titles that you mentioned, uh, it was the system uh, recruitment one, goes into that. Uh, because the 9-11 story was also sold or presented in layers. So the first layer would be a purely political materialistic thing where, yeah, uh, planes hit the towers. And then you could um, even see it like planes hit the towers, but it wasn't the, the hijackers. It would, the, the, the mainstream story is wrong, but planes actually hit the tower. So you had a lot of goings about uh, at that time, like Israel did it or, you know, it was an inside job, that kind of thing. Then uh, the second layer would be, for example, that there were no planes. Okay, no planes, but actual uh, um, something in that sense. So some of the imagery was still correct, but the planes were inserted. And then a different layer would be, uh, it was all media fakery, let's say, something. Yeah, we know that the buildings disappeared in the sense of they were there one day and the next day they weren't, but none of the images are reliable. So all these layers are, each of them are a step back, you understand, a, a further step back towards less literalism, let's say. And I think that um, literalism, to make things literal, is one of the defining characteristics of society, not just nowadays, perhaps, but it's really prevalent nowadays, and that, that needs to be addressed, in my view. 
Well, we've got an awful lot to talk about, but what I like to do with these conversations in the first part of the call, because a lot of the listeners have heard you before, there is an overlap between the listeners here and fakeologist.com and the other platforms that are out there in this corner of the internet, but some of them might not be familiar with you and your work, I mean. So let's rewind right back to the start. You said that you were listening to Wake Up With Ab, which was before my time. I didn't find Fakeologist till 2015, by which time he was calling himself Fakeologist. But I have heard of his show on Talk Show back in the days of Chris Kendall and the Hoax Busters Call and all of this. So can you take us back to when you first started to question 9-11 or when you first found Ab the Fakeologist, all these uh, live streams that were on Talk Show, all of this kind of stuff? When did you first start going down the rabbit hole, as some people describe it? Well, um, it would be it would have been around 2005, I think. And I was, uh, I still remember uh, it vividly. I was at um, a birthday party. At the time I had, I had a band and the guitarist uh, um, was holding a birthday party and his brother, his older brother, uh, who was a very peculiar figure, let's say, was just, you know, standing on one of the corners alone, uh, not speaking to anyone. And that piqued my curiosity. You know, I was like uh, curious, why is this guy um, alone? And later I discovered that he really didn't relate to any of, of the conversations that was um, going on there. And so I um, started uh, talking to him and he started um, giving me a few hints about reality. And it ended with him giving me a CD at the time with uh, a few documentaries at the time it was uh, the stuff that was available it was like alex jones and that kind of thing i remember it had i think it had loose change in there and that kind of thing and um i took the cd i watched it and i was like whoa you know so there's something to this and then i started exploring exploring myself going through channel channel after channel trying to dig what what might uh, be going on, and so on and so forth. And eventually, it must have been 2012, because I think that's when Ab started his his thing. Uh, I I picked up on on that talk show, show, and well, started uh, listening. Basically, uh, I remember that at the time there was only one caller. I don't know if he had much of an audience. Um, and there was only one caller calling in every show that was Marcus Allen. Uh, he was calling in every show. And I even felt I even felt sort of um, that he was uh, sort of taking the show away from Ab in a sense, because uh, he was when he called, he was basically taking over. And uh, so when he started doing the that was that must have been 2013, because that's the oldest uh, recording, I think, where I'm presented. When he started holding these Skype calls, he called them raw calls, I decided to, to call in with, uh, with my girlfriend at the time. And, uh, and well, that's it. So it developed. And uh, I've been on and off the fakeologist um, circles, let's say, uh, over the years. And around, I don't know if it was 18 or 19, around 2018 19 i started posting stuff myself uh which were m m some of them even correlate to some of the things that i already tried to bring to the conversation in those past calls um, at fakeologist but i felt that uh well it, it probably needs a separate treatment it's it's not really something that you can just um, uh, let's say dump it on on the callers there so yeah, um, uh, a bit of a summary there, but uh, that's more or less how it went. That is an excellent summary. So around 2005, you were in a band and you were at the guitarist's birthday party. By the way, what did you play in the band? No, I, I used to sing, yeah. You were a singer? Yeah. Do you still sing? Well, not, not really. Well, in the shower. <laughs> but, uh, but no, um, I've left that part when... When I realized that um, to make it in the uh, in the music business, I had to somewhat sell my soul, uh, 